Um, it's never easy being first. Um, and I just want to give you a bit of background to fill in before the clock starts ticking. Because people who know me know that I could talk back the of a donkey. And because of these constraints, I'm not going to get sidetracked and I'm going to stick to the script. So I've got a piece of paper. Um, I've lived in relatively remote areas for 30 years, or well, even over 30 years, um, on private water supplies, often getting cut off when the weather is bad. Over a third of that time, I worked without electricity on egg. Many of us were very productive there, and I set up and ran a successful uh, cooperative with a friend, selling work to visitors from her house. Um, I felt completely rooted to the culture there, um, and the community, and the life. So moving to Dumfries and Galloway, to a remote house up in the hills, I felt landlocked and isolated. I did know creative people here, um, but I really missed the sea. At night, the lights of the houses in the valley below, I saw them as fishing boats sheltering at anchor. And in, and in the wind, I could still hear, still hear the pulse of the waves, which had been my constant for 11 years. I admire anyone who makes anything well, and we all do, I suppose, um, in what we would call difficult circumstances. I marvel at the quality of work made centuries ago, work that gives me a bump on the forehead in museums when I'm trying to look at the detail of something, and anything that prompts the question, how was that done? How did they do that? So even now, um, no one's figured out how the Egyptians made some of their excellent work, which I think is sort of fascinating. Yes, even with all the technology we've got nowadays, still can't work it out. And that's something I find myself thinking about quite often. Um, I used to say my influences were architecture, fab bits of engineering, a word or a thought, and of course anything that was made thousands of years before the invention of electricity. Um, however, <laughs> preparing this, um, it's been a really interesting exercise. Um, it's sort of like holding up a mirror to your life. And I've realised, of course, surprise, surprise, it's the environment that has the most influence on my life. And this is my work shed. I lived on or nearby this beach for 11 years. This was a life of sun and laughter, music and midges, singing sands, gales, flood, salt, flotsam and jetsam, miss boats, because we only had four a week, letter writing, Gallic crack, and the beauty of all generations mixing together in a small community of 70 people. I developed my practice as my boys grew, and along with native flowers, painted brooches, and many, many beads, Due to demand, I made Celtic influence pieces and worked to commission. The brooch was a leave-in gift to a long-term resident returning to New Zealand. All were made in natural or gaslight and were hand-polished. As was this, 18 karat three-coloured gold ring. My limited time at the bench was weather-related. No fine, delicate soldering could be done in storms, as the shed walls gave in the wind. At least here in Dumfries and Galloway, I'm in the stone house. Um, but I can still feel the blast of the wind um, on my studio window. The contrast of the hills and the changing perspectives of, and colours were a fascination when I moved. I love the dissecting stone dikes butting into the forestry boundaries where ruined communities still spoke and the cries of curlews and crows replaced the sheer waters and the seagulls that I had loved. I thought that the move to the mainland and electricity would mean efficiency at the bench However, I moved to an area that's renowned for outages, and every time the wind blew, the power went off. It was late November, I was preparing for a solo show and a craft fair. I kept saying, this will not faze you. Exquisitely jewellery has been made for millennia without power. <laughs> and when it didn't fail, I found that old missing the sea feeling creeping back. This was a commission in 18 karat yellow gold with aquamarines. And unlike fish, it sat very well vertically. And at moments of intensity, I stitched that loss. This was indeed therapy for me and one of my sons, age nine. On a rainy day, I asked him to count and thread the beads onto the silver wire before I worked them. 1,820. This berry has a tassel and a crystal ball, and he did know how to count. This is another late night deadline. The weather was good, so the power was on. 
I'd been working on fine details, and when I felt the midges getting to me, I looked up and couldn't believe my eyes. The room was full. This is the light bulb, and under it, the work um, that I was meant to be posting in the morning. <laughs> light on water, a twinkling shore, the flopping of lazy waves on a moonlit night. The sea really did sneak, or seep even, into my work. And it's sort of obvious when using pearls, though. You know, um, yeah, here is the shore and the waves breaking from one tip of the bay <coughs> to the rocks on the far side. And there's the old fishing nets that we used to drag up from the shore and used as windbreaks. But my work changed in 1985. When, 95, sorry, when I had a second solo show at the Open Eye in Edinburgh, I began to feel more settled here in Dumfries and Galloway, and I started to focus more on the future and building a wider reputation on this much larger island. Using a 0.3mm Brit, drilling all these pieces could only be done in peace and quiet, which, in a house of heavy metal guitarists, was always very late at night. The fine wire had to be carefully threaded and tightened to almost a musical strength. And more brooches. I like making them. They always contain memories. These are hollow, something someone recently told me was difficult. I just smiled. Um, these still reflect my feeling of isolation and loss, but a trip to Egypt soon dispelled my nostalgia for sand. <laughs> and all my life I've been interested in how things work. As a child I watched my father use his lathe and was fascinated by the cleanliness of the lines and the curves. These rings look engineered, but they're handmade. Any great engineering thrills me, and I'll never forget the visit to the workings of London Bridge as a child, all those beautiful cogs and pistons. And these brooches pay homage to a day in Gateshead when the Baltic opened. They're adjustable with tiny hinges. But um, linking maritime, trade, history and cultures, I won a commission to make finials on the White Sands. The brief was to link the present community with the past trade guilds of the town, I spent time with wonderful historian Alfie Truckle, RIP, um, with old folks at the George Street Community Centre and talked about design possibilities and history with children at two primary schools in the town. The fish revolved, the sails, spyglasses and whistles rotate. And the whistles used to call the mill girls to work. They clattered down the venal cobbles in their clogs. And this whistle works when it's not clogged with sweetie papers and spiders' webs. <laughs> Um, and as this project included many other artists, I began to feel part of the broader, wider community by that time. Continuity, traditional skills. I love the age-old skill of diamond mounting and setting. Traditionally, only the wearer, and now all of you, uh, knows the detail of the technique underneath. It's called opening up, letting light in. Some of these diamonds are from very old rings, giving them a new lease of life. This is my most recent conscious influence, the view from my kitchen and back door. The angles of sheds, the oak, the lacy shadows, light and dark, lines and curves, near and far. The power lines are my grid and reference. And life's always a balancing act, actually. Three, these three brooches are all spirit levels, but very like the one that someone gave my father as a child. And so things get passed down. And continue, and somewhere along the line, I have learned and accepted that peace and solitude make space for thought and ideas, and I treasure it. And I'm up above the loch where the red kites no longer rely totally on their feeding station. So when I'm out walking, they follow me, and from my bench, while I'm juggling deadlines, I can watch their acrobatics. They're out there, full of life, making it all look easy on the stormiest of days. I had two power cuts while trying to finish this presentation. Was I phased? Nah, it's just life. <laughs>